everybody. This is the Passive House podcast with Paul Keeley. My name is Mikhail Laxon, and this, of course, is the man himself, EcoBuilt founder and CEO, Paul Keeley. Good day, folks. Good day, everyone. Welcome. And uh, again, you know, doing our part in educating, making aware the passive house concept. You know, it, it's a type of house that's going to dominate the net zero world that is ultimately right around the corner, anywhere and everywhere in, in North America, Canada, the States, uh, right from New Mexico, Arizona, up to Alaska, British Columbia to Nova Scotia, everywhere in between. And for this um, podcast, from <laughs> Maine. From, and we have uh, our guest from Maine, exactly, right on the on the eastern coast of the northeastern states, United States of America. Uh, Seth McAllister and uh, you know great to have you on here Seth thanks for doing this thanks for asking I'm glad to be here tell me like when you were planning your build project were you I'm assuming you were considering other types of of houses as well you you were probably looking at a number of different types of homes to build is that correct yeah we had originally uh, planned on a shipping container home uh, and, you know, we, we did want to pursue it from a, a as passive perspective as possible, you know, and I didn't truly at that point understand what passive building uh, entailed. And, uh, you know, it's, it's funny, we actually had a, a gentleman that consulted for us that um, is the owner of a passive building company that I, I now work for. And, um, you know, we the the shipping container home just didn't work out um but the more i started researching it um you know the more i fell in love with it and knew that it was the answer uh the the house that my family and i moved out of in new hampshire was this old 1950s cape um all of the insulation had settled to you know the bottom 12 inches of the wall cavity and um my my parents had just rebuilt their house and the just moving from a two by four to a two by six construction um dense pack cellulose and feeling the difference between my house and their house was a no-brainer <laughs> i mean it was you know I, I didn't really understand the extent at that point in time um but now seeing even more passive building it is like you said the future so is your new your parents new house was that um a house built to basic code though or or, yeah. or like what was what was the experience in in that transition in general uh you know it was just it was a lot more comfortable house in the winter uh e even in the in the summertime you know uh our our house in New Hampshire was a smaller house um but it was so leaky so drafty uh that it was you know, bang your head against the wall trying to heat it during the, the winter, uh, even trying to cool it during the summer. It was just, it was so inefficient. And we could see, uh, gosh, the exponential, exponential efficiency improvements just in a, a, a better insulated, tighter house. So was there one, there was there one thing in particular, like how did you learn about passive building? Where did you first hear about it? Do you remember? Yeah, it was it was during my research with with shipping containers, and then you know when that fell through, uh, we just started looking more and more at at uh, passive houses, and you, you know we we ran across a couple of uh, companies in Maine that had that you know provided uh, passive houses, and we we came across EcoBuilt. Um, just luck of the draw, really. Um, you know, there wasn't anything, um, you know, I wasn't looking internationally. I was looking closer, closer to Maine, but, um, yeah, the, the, the more I looked into it, the more I researched and the more I learned and, and knew that it was the answer for, for us. Um, you know, we, we didn't want to have to worry about code changes or deterioration of the house in 20 years uh we really wanted this to be our last home um and so yeah we are pretty happy with our decision seth i got to um i gotta ask you 
Why is, so Passive House, we get most of our inquiries through the state of Maine. Why is it so popular in Maine? That's a great question. I um, I don't know. I, I can tell you that last I looked, we had 43 certified houses in the state, um, which, okay. you know, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. I mean, you know, 43 certified houses, certified not just built to passive spec, but mm -hmm. actually certified. And, you know, I, I think, um, I do know that there is a, a, a change coming to the building code um, in the next couple of months. It may have been postponed to the beginning of the year, but they're going to start requiring blower door tests on every, every new construction, um, 3.0 or better for ACH. And, you know, the we've combined our our building code specifications. We used to have two different geographical areas. We are now one. And I I think it's I think they're it's starting to get out there. Um, the company that I work for is part of an uh, an organization called Passive House Maine, and uh, we have a couple of employees that teach for the organization. Um, we do a lot of presentations, and it's it's. We're, we're working on getting passive building out there to those that aren't aware yet. Um, you know, the, the more, so we, we are also working with the local high school, the local, you know, we, our high school has a building trades program. We have a, an engineering and drafting program and we're working toward um, in, involving the younger, younger people uh, in passive houses in hopes that we can even expand it beyond so uh, that's the only thing that i can think of as to why you know there are so many people in the state um granted the weather's not the best uh so that could be another component cool um yeah really interesting to hear that there there's that many certified houses because and um in order to certify a house that has to be led by the the actual homeowner Yes, I, I definitely agree. And, you know, when I when I I think when I first started hearing about passive, I was hearing somewhere in the the, the range of about 10 to 20 percent more expensive. Um, but that's that's come down pretty. You know, I, I'm hearing a pretty consistent six percent uh, across the board right now. Six percent cool. for a significant. I mean, yeah, that's that's within I mean, your ROI is just. Uh, three to five years at that point i mean maybe less but you know seth tell me with respect to your with respect to the design of the house how did you how did that transpire did you have the land before you before you chose a design how did you make that decision my wife <laughs> <laughs> no i i uh we we did have uh the land fortunately um <laughs> I think we we had a couple of the the layout the design was less important as ensuring that we had a small efficient space and that uh, each of the children had their own rooms. Um, you know we we didn't we wanted a small house as small as possible, um, and so you know, when I, I think I reached out and, you know, within a day you had said, Hey, try this, this floor plan. And it kind of went, it went down that path. And, you know, we did look at some others, but the, um, yeah, it just kind of, it just kind of worked. It fell into place. It worked out. Do you have any tips that you would give to someone thinking about building their own passive house on their own property? I, I do think that uh, the designs that that EcoBuilt offers lend themselves well to going in a lot of different areas. Um, we lucked out and, and, you know, we're on a fairly decent sized parcel of land. Uh, but the, the floor, the footprint is not a large footprint. Um, and so, you know, even... Gosh, even in where we came from in New Hampshire, I was on a you know a quarter of an acre, and the house would have worked out there. We would have met all of the setback requirements, um, and so I I I think that the 
the the designs that you offer yeah they they can go on a lot of different uh um, pieces of land what uh and what direction is is the window wall in in the house facing on your property we are actually due west no i I was just gonna follow up and and ask what stage of of the building you were at and and find out if um like your experience with the sun uh coming in through the windows comparison between winter and summer um if there's a difference in how much the sun penetrates into the building or not and just your your experiences with the with the way the house is situated on the property i can't speak to it 100% yet I do know that, you know, we, we get some, some sun on the, uh, north facing side in the morning, um, which, which is the, our main entrance and the back bedrooms get a lot of sun, um, that do flow down the hallway, uh, the hallways. And then we get a, we start to get sun in the, the front at approximately, two or three in the afternoon. Um, so what's nice is it's what I'm hoping is that we don't get a lot of sun in the, in the mornings, um, during the summer until later in the afternoon. But I, I do anticipate the sun warming up the living space in the evenings. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to play out as far as any of the passive gains at this point. Um, the windows just haven't been in long enough to experience that. But I, I, I'm kind of looking forward to having a nice afternoon um, sun uh, temperature increase uh, during the winter. Seth, how does your house feel in size, even though it's a like, because I know that Paul's house feels massive. What is What about your home? I'm actually really glad that you asked that question uh, because the house that we moved out of was approximately 1,400 square feet inside. The Pine Valley feels twice as as large. Um, you know, like the it was just a, a really closed floor plan. Pine Valley is fairly open, and you know, each of the kids have their own private space that we we didn't have before a small kitchen. So it feels easily double the size of the 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 house that we just sold yes oh yeah um, there were there have been a number of people that have asked about the second story tell us a little bit about the hvac what um what's the heating system and and how did you make that decision yeah so we will be running a single heat pump air source heat pump um and you know prior to mixed question you were talking about um uh essentially um shoot what was what you were you were i wanted to talk about um heating the home because if i'm not mistaken um you know there's that's a lot of concern is how how do you heat uh, a home with with just a single heat pump Mm -hmm. and you know some some people really like my code enforcement officer really wants me to to add in baseboard heat and you know, it's just, I don't think that it's a necessary, um, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there was some heat pump service on your your house this, this winter and you may or may not have, what, you heated your house twice a day for an hour? Um, something yeah. along those. Remind me, Seth, are you off grid or will you be connected to the grid? Uh, we will be grid to start. And then uh, I will probably go a net meter route. Um, but even even if I add supplemental heat, I think based on some research that I've been doing, it will be an infrared heater um, because it's not heating the space. It's heating objects. Uh, and so it, it typically, from what I found, um, it actually is more energy efficient than a baseboard heater because it's not heating the space. It's, it's heating the body. And so you're feeling warmer, even though the space actually isn't warmer. It's also really beneficial for, for your body um, joint. I mean, there have been infrared saunas for a decade, right? And they tout um, joint, joint benefit. Uh, so I think if I were to add something 
if I had to add something, it would probably be infrared. Uh, but at this point, I, I don't, I don't see that even. Interesting becoming... comment on the, on the infrared. Yeah. So in your research doing that, is it, is it more efficient because it's heating, it's heating objects. It, it doesn't need as much energy output, therefore electrical inputs to, mm -hmm. to keep everything temperature. Not even so much um, the 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 output as uh, it's the it's warming the objects and it warms the objects in a much quicker period of time than it would um, take to create the entire space yeah. right to heat the entire space. So because when when you're using baseboard, it's it's heating. You're you're you've got a thermostat and it's going to stop heating once that the entire space has met that temperature. Um, and so the infrared doesn't worry about that. It's it's like it's heating objects. That is a lot more efficient. <laughs>